Automating emails will help you save a lot of time with a task that otherwise would be super manual, boring, and would take a lot of time, right? So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you automate marketing emails inside HubSpot. For that, we are going to be talking about the automation section, namely workflows. This is how you create a drip campaign inside HubSpot. So um, it's a big topic in itself, but I think I managed to put together a quick overview. Uh, hope you like the tutorial. Welcome to our tutorial on how to create a HubSpot drip campaign. Let's jump straight into it. Um, first of all, for you to create a HubSpot drip campaign, you need access to automation inside your HubSpot account. Now, automation is a paid feature, okay? You don't have access to automation inside of a HubSpot free account. So if you don't have access to automation, take a look at the link that I added for you here in the video description. It's a link to a free trial, okay? Um, it's, it's a 14 day free trial from a HubSpot automation subscription. Um, and, and, you know, no worries, no credit card required or you don't have to worry. It's literally just a free trial so that you can follow along with the video and learn how to create a drip campaign, okay? So take a look at that free trial if you don't have automation in your account. So first I'm going to show you how to create a drip campaign if you have access to a HubSpot professional subscription. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the exact same thing, how to create a HubSpot drip campaign if you only have access to a HubSpot starter subscription. Okay, they differ a little bit. You, will, you are going to understand later on. And so let's go ahead and let's, let's create a drip campaign um, by clicking on workflows. A HubSpot drip campaign is essentially a sequence of emails, right? So to create a sequence of emails inside HubSpot, we need to create a workflow. It's, it's that structure that we're going to use to organize our sequence of emails. Now, when you click on create workflow, the orange button here in the right sidebar, you're going to see two options from scratch or from template. Go ahead and click from scratch. Um, just so that you know, you have the option to get HubSpot to create you know, workflows from templates. It's it's um templates library, which you can you can use to learn how to work with workflows, so to say. So it's if you're not that familiar with creating workflows, it's a great idea to go ahead with a template first, just so that you understand what each box represents, how to create triggers and, and so on. For now, we are going to get started from scratch. So what kind of workflow are we building? There are a few different options you can choose from here in the left sidebar. This is a workflow that enrolls contacts. We are sending a sequence of automated emails to people. Because of this reason, we need to select a contact based workflow here in the left sidebar. Just so that you know, you can create workflows that enroll companies, which is another type of HubSpot object deals, another type of HubSpot object and things like that, right? Just so that you know, you have these options. But for now, we are literally creating a sequence of emails, emails, automated emails, which will be sent to people, to contacts, right? So we are creating a contact based workflow. How do you want this workflow to start? Blank workflow or based on specific dates? Once again, we are going to select a blank workflow. We are starting from scratch just so that you know you have the option to start workflows based on a specific date in the calendar okay but we are not going we're not going to talk too much about these options here it's, it's a bit too complex for our first um for an introduction tutorial so let's go ahead and select blank workflow and click on next now we are going to see the workflow creation page so to say um before we go ahead and create the workflow it's important for you to understand what are the two most important elements inside a HubSpot workflow? A HubSpot workflow is composed of two things, triggers and actions. We are going to need both for our drip campaign. So what is a trigger? When you see this message here, um, set up triggers, what does this mean? A trigger is essentially that thing that needs to happen for the workflow to start. For our drip campaign, how, how does this campaign gets sent. What does the user need to do for these emails to be sent to them? For, for this example here, I'm going to go ahead with a form submission, meaning someone went to my website, they filled out a form, and I want to send them a series of automated emails from a form submission. So the trigger that I'm going to hand with for this workflow is a form submission trigger. It's located here. Just so that you know, you have other types of triggers. You can trigger drip campaigns from other types of actions. For example, when a property changes, when someone um, gets added to a list, when someone interacts with your ads, when someone interacts with your emails, 
when someone views specific pages on your website. There are different types of triggers you can choose, okay? For this example here, I'm going to show you how to create a drip campaign from a form submission, which is probably the most common type of drip campaign that we set up for a business. So let's go ahead and let's click on form submission here. Now, for me to set up a trigger based on a form submission, I need the form to be created and published inside HubSpot in the first place. So I need the form, right? Um, so how do you create a form inside HubSpot? I already went ahead and created and published the form inside of my HubSpot account in the first place, just so that we make things quicker here. The form that I want to go ahead is is the ebook form, is the ebook download form, um, and it's it's called Project Management Best Practices ebook download. Meaning, you know, suppose I'm a project management related business, okay, people go to my website and they fill out this form to download an ebook that I created, an ebook about project management best practices. Okay, so. The form is an ebook download form. Now, um, contact has filled out form on any page or a specific page, just so that you know, you have the options to trigger um, a workflow from when people fill out a form on a specific page of your website. For now, I'm going to go ahead with any page, just so that you know, you have this option, okay? And I'm going to click on apply filter. So that's my trigger here. I'm going to click on save and the trigger will be added to my workflow. So. The trigger is someone has filled out the form project management best practices ebook download on any page. As soon as someone takes this action right on the website, what happens? Now comes the action. An action is essentially what happens inside the workflow. In the case of a drip campaign, what is the main action that we have? The email itself, right? We are sending people an automated email. So the action is the automated email itself. When you click on the plus symbol that we saw just now, you have a list of actions that you can choose from. And the one that you're going to select for your drip campaign is the send email action. Okay. And then once again, you have to choose that email that you are um, going to add to your sequence. I have the email ready here. It's called thank you for downloading our ebook. So that's the first email that I want to send as soon as someone fills out the form uh, to, to download the ebook. Okay. Just so that you know, I will go back to where I was just now, just so that you know, you have the option to add other types of actions to your workflows, okay? You can do all sorts of things. You can create multiple journeys inside of your workflow by using branches. You can um, format data. You can get HubSpot to send alerts to your team members. You can get HubSpot to create tasks for you, assign leads to specific owners and you know, the, the list of actions is really, um, it's really long. Um, for a drip campaign, the type of action that you need is essentially the automated email action and delays. So that's, that's um, you know, a workflow action in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and add the other emails to my sequence. So the second email that I want to add is um, an email that I prepared here as well, and it's called um, how did you like our ebook, right? So first they sign up to download the ebook, then they read the ebook, then I send them a thank you email, and then I want them to see my how did you like the ebook email, which is essentially an email where we're gathering feedback about the ebook. And then the third email that I want to add to my sequence is um, an email where I invite them to join our community. So join. As, as you can see here, I'm just typing one word of the email title and HubSpot automatically recognizes which email I'm talking about. So, you know, of course, if you have multiple emails with the same name, you have to, uh, you know, use more words for your search, right? But I only have one email with the word join. So I just typed join and HubSpot automatically suggested that one email. It's an email where I invite people to join our Slack community. So as soon as someone fills out my ebook download form, I send them a thank you email. Then I send them an email where I ask, how do they like the ebook? And then another email where I invite them to join our community. Now, if I turn this workflow as it is, people are going to receive one email and the second email and the third email right after each other. Meaning, you know, with seconds in between, milliseconds in between. Is this ideal? 
Not really, right? For a drip campaign, I need another element called a dime delay. A time delay is another type of action. For me to add a delay, all I have to do is click on the plus sign in the place where I add to add that delay, right? In between these two emails here. And I'm going to set this delay for a, a specific amount of time. For example, five days, right? Five days gives them enough time to read the ebook and, and, and you know, be in the mindset of providing some feedback. Now, between the second and the third email, I can also add another delay, for example, seven days or even more than that. So you have the option to set up as many days or hours or minutes as you want here in the delay for a set amount of time action. I want to add this um, time delay for, let's say, 10 days, for example, so we give some space, right? So there, there is not a specific rule of thumb regarding how many days you need on a delay in between emails. It's a matter of experimenting and seeing what works for your audience. So this is my workflow. I have all the elements that I need for my drip campaign, which is the trigger. In this case, it's an ebook download form submission, right, as a trigger. Um, and then I have my email actions as well with time delays in between this, this email actions. Um, you probably noticed I renamed my workflow here. Uh, you can rename a workflow by clicking on the title of the workflow and editing your text directly. I recommend you to rename your workflows uh, just so that later on you know what these workflows are about. There, there will probably be a point in your um, uh, in your journey with HubSpot that you have a big number of workflows and um, you know later on it's difficult to keep track of what each workflow does. So I recommend you to go ahead and give them proper names. Okay, so this is our drip campaign here. It's ready to go. Now we're going to go ahead and click on review and publish. A really important setting that I have to tell you about is this first. Uh, enrollment setting here. When you create a workflow inside HubSpot, HubSpot will um, give you the option to either enroll people that are currently in your HubSpot account, people that match that criteria, meaning in this case here, uh, people that I have in the CRM who downloaded that ebook, who filled out that form, right? People that currently meet the criteria. Or if you don't want this to happen, you, you will essentially get HubSpot to only enroll people that meet that criteria after you turn on the workflow from the moment when I turn on the workflow onwards, so to say. So you have these two options here. This is what these options mean. You have to choose one of them before turning on your workflow. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead with enroll existing contacts who meet the trigger criteria as of now. Okay. Just so that you know that you have these two options. Once this is done, I will click on turn on and here you go. This is my workflow uh, up and running. From now on, as soon as I start getting um, form submissions right to this ebook download form, people will be automatically added to my workflow and they will start receiving the emails of my drip campaign. Okay, so as promised, how do you create a HubSpot drip campaign if you only have access to a HubSpot starter subscription? Um, just so that you know, automation for starter packages is a little bit more limited, okay? Um, this type of drip campaign that we're creating, a drip campaign that triggers from a form submission, this is possible within a starter package, okay? There are other types of drip campaigns you cannot create at all with a starter package, just so that you know. For this, though, we are going to create a drip campaign from the form itself. So we are not looking at the workflows section anymore. We're going to the form. So let's go to marketing, lead capture, and then forms. So my form is going to be there. It's going to be created and published inside HubSpot. I'm going to create a drip campaign from inside of the form. It's, it's a little bit of a different way of, of setting up a workflow, right? So the ebook download form is the one we had, right? So let me just type ebook here. I'm going to click on edit inside of the form itself, almost like if I was about to edit the form. And I'm going to look at the automation section here. Now, when I click on automation, HubSpot automatically understands that I want to create a workflow triggered by that form submission from that specific form submission. That's why I cannot really change the trigger here. The trigger is automatically set up for me. Contact submits the form, blah, 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 ebook download. Okay. So in this case here, I cannot really change the trigger just so that you know. And then the steps that I'm going to follow are the exact same ones as, as I was doing just now. So I'm going to start adding my emails here. Thank you for downloading and, and adding my delays. So that's the first email here. Thank you for downloading. Save. 
right? And then I add my delays and then my, I add my other email. So the, the step by step of adding the actions is the exact same, just so that you know, I'm following the exact same um, um, directions here. But yes, you know, the, the main difference is that in this case, the, the trigger gets automatically added for me because I'm doing this from a form submission. Just so that you know, in general, um, you have much more flexibility with a HubSpot professional type of account because with a HubSpot professional type of account, you can mix and match different types of triggers. For example, I could do something like, you know, uh, my trigger is contact has filled out ebook download and their country is equal to United States, right? And they visited my pricing page on the website, stuff like that. So I can mix and match different types of triggers. This is something that I don't really have for a starter package. As you can see here, the starter package gives me only uh, one single trigger from my drip campaign, and that's a static trigger. It's something that I cannot really change. This is just important for you to know um, in case you're wondering the differences between these different types of, um, of HubSpot accounts, right? And that's pretty much it. That's how you create a HubSpot drip campaign. If you're interested in learning more about HubSpot workflows, check out my course HubSpot Marketing Advanced. It's on Udemy Academy. I added the link to the course here in the video description. It's, it's a course where we cover basically how to create workflows from scratch. You're going to learn everything from all the different types of triggers you can use, how to create simple types of workflows, um, how to create workflows that a segment into multiple journeys depending on conditions that you set up, um, which are essentially more complex types of workflows. This course also covers HubSpot marketing reporting and advanced features. So check out my course if you're interested in learning more about um, all these topics. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.